More than ever, according to public opinion polls, Americans want out of Iraq. The war has dragged on longer than most Americans imagined, and the White House and Pentagon are fighting an uphill political battle to bolster support for the war. How does a nation at war come to decide that the battle is no longer worth fighting? Would pulling out of Iraq mean the U.S. has lost? Lost what? Iraq or a broader war on terror? What about the Iraqis? Where would a U.S. withdrawal leave them? Do Iraqis want the U.S. to stay? What does the U.S. owe them? We'll raise these and other questions next on Great Decisions. In a democracy, agreement is not essential, but participation is. Join us as we discuss today's most critical global issues. Join us for Great Decisions. Great Decisions is produced by the Foreign Policy Association, inspiring Americans to learn more about the world. Funding for Great Decisions is provided by the Star Foundation and U.S. Trust. The war in Iraq is taking its toll in lives and treasure. It's expensive and deadly. More than 3,800 coalition forces have been killed. And somewhere between 66 and 100,000 Iraqi civilians, maybe more, have also perished. And the White House struggles to persuade Americans that things are getting better in the face of daily news of bombs killing soldiers or obliterating a crowded market. Nothing's inevitable in Iraq except more bloodshed right now. All the while, the fledgling Iraqi government, slowly reconstituting its security forces, seems unable or unwilling to help U.S. troops quell the violence. They're trying to hold this thing together. They're sitting on a violent civil war. Uh, 27 million people struggling for political power and survival. All that has left many Americans feeling they've had enough. Recent polls report that 66% of the American people feel the U.S. should either decrease the number of troops in Iraq or pull out altogether. And the war is losing support in Congress, too. Some once stalwart supporters of the president's Iraq policy from within his own party have come out in favor of getting out sooner than later. Amid a new presidential election campaign, the Democratic candidates have all called for either phased redeployments or immediate withdrawal. If you are a Democrat, you can blame the Republicans. If you're a Republican, you can blame the Democrats. And each can make a pretty good case. But the fact of the matter is the country is not unified. While the debate over staying or leaving gets attention in the media and around dinner tables, we hear much less about the consequences of either course of action. If tens of thousands of Iraqi civilians are dying every year now, what will happen if coalition forces leave? Might it get even bloodier? Would a U.S. departure create a power vacuum? And if so, who will step in to fill it? Other Arabs? The Iranians. Would they be able to accomplish what the U.S. hasn't? There are so many different factions in Iraq about which Americans know very little. Sunnis, Shiites, Kurds, and even within these groups, there are different sects and tribes. Among fighting forces, there's al-Qaeda in Iraq, the Iraqi security forces themselves, and militias controlled by various political and religious factions. Will they be able to resolve their differences? Do Iraqis even want to resolve them? Exiting Iraq, deadline for democracy, next on Great Decisions. And now from our New York studios, here is Ralph Begleiter. Joining us to discuss the future of Iraq, both for Iraqis and for the United States, are Colonel Michael Meese, a political science and economics professor at the United States Military Academy at West Point and a top advisor to current U.S. commander in Iraq, General David Petraeus. And Les Gelb, Chairman Emeritus of the Council on Foreign Relations in New York.